So uh, this morning we had occasion to uh, meet with uh, Samir, who is the six-year-old little boy uh, whose mother I met with uh, in detention in Laredo, Texas, uh, approximately um, three days ago, uh, Levis. Um, I was honored to be able to deliver uh, the letter to Samir uh, and to read it to him. Um, at first, as you might imagine, um, he was very shy and very uh, standoffish, um, and we kept telling him that uh, we were there and had been sent uh, by his mother, <clears throat> uh, but uh, he, uh, he didn't believe us uh, for a significant period of time. Um, he just kept saying, no, no, it's not true, it's not true. Um, even when we began to, uh, we showed him the letter and we began to uh, read it to him, um, he denied that it was uh, from her. Uh, so clearly, you know, he's been through a lot. He hasn't seen his mother or communicated with her at all in uh, the better part of 18 days. He's had no communication with her whatsoever. Uh, this is outrageous that these children have been separated from their parents, their mothers. Uh, he was separated from his mother outside of Laredo, Texas. And as you all know, um, Phoenix is not directly next door to Laredo, Texas. Uh, it's inexcusable that these children have been transported around the nation, shipped like cargo, away from their parents. Uh, in many cases, their parents are then moved uh, even further away. Uh, the children don't know where their parents are, and the parents don't know where the children are. And in many cases, when you ask our government, they can't tell you where the children are as it relates to um, each of these mothers. Uh, this is a disgrace. It has no place in the world, uh, let alone in the United States of America. This is not what we are about. Um, this is not our America, period. Uh, it took a long time to break the ice with Samir, uh, but eventually uh, we did break the ice and he opened up a little bit uh, and he asked that we deliver uh, this uh, picture that he colored uh, for his mother. So we intend on doing that. We intend on carrying this back to Laredo, uh, to the medium facility that his mother is located in and delivering this um, to his mother. I'll be happy to accept some questions. Yeah, about a couple of, go ahead. Oh, I said a couple hours ago you tweeted out that you're now representing whistleblowers. With Correct. Uh, and, and other facilities. What are these people telling you about what's going on? Well, I'm not at liberty to get into the details yet, but we've been contacted in the last 24 hours by at least three whistleblowers, uh, uh, two of whom are with ICE, one of whom is with an outside contractor. Um, and we're going to blow this thing wide open. We're going to let the American people decide what consequences result from what happened here. But this is an atrocity. Like a facility like this place here, like the Southwest Key, is that the, you're talking about the Southwest Well, I don't, again, I don't, I don't want to get into the details, but there's a lot of people in this nation that have witnessed a lot of things over the last few weeks. Um, and even though they may be working at some of these facilities or may be working within ICE, um, they're not happy about what happened or what is, continues to happen. Many of these individuals have children of their own, um, and they place themselves in this situation, uh, and they're not happy about it. How is the boy physically? His, his physical condition was fine. Um, I think the facility is well maintained. I thought the staff was um, was very cooperative. They're doing their best to care for these uh, children, but the fact remains that these children are better off with their parents, and certainly should not be over a thousand miles away. Um, in an unknown place. I mean, if you can imagine, you know, this young boy's never been to um, the United States before. Um, he doesn't know what to think. He doesn't know if he's ever going to see his mother again. Um, this is not how we should be treating these children. How old is he again? He's six years of age. Where is he from? Uh, he's from Honduras. Why did they come here? 
Um, that they went on a three-month journey to get to the border. Um, it took them three months, um, largely uh, by foot. Uh, his mother attempted to bring him to the United States to make a better life for herself and her son. They fled a very violent situation um, in Honduras. They fled a very violent situation in Honduras, and she had a legitimate concern um, that she would be killed and her son would be killed, and that's why they uh, went on that three-month journey in an attempt to come to the United States. Are they seeking apprehended? I'm sorry? Are they seeking asylum? Presently, yes. Can you give them a brief? They were apprehended uh, briefly after crossing um, uh, the river outside of Laredo. So they did not go to an authorized port of entry as required by law? Well, I, I don't know whether that's required by law or not. Actually, I think uh, I'm not going to get into a debate with you. But look, here's the bottom line. Whether people are coming here legally or illegally, you don't take their kids from them and ship their kids thousands of miles away. And the fact of the matter is this. If it was a white family that looked like me, if I took my family somewhere illegally in the world and my children were detained and separated from me, um, you can bet your ass that the State Department and 100 million Americans would be up in arms demanding uh, those children release. Uh, and the fact that this is happening to thousands of children, regardless of where they're from, regardless of whether they've come to a legitimate port of entry, I don't think it makes any difference whatsoever. You don't treat children like this. How many of these families do you represent now? Uh, upwards of 60 at this point. How many what? of them in Phoenix? How many uh, have children in Phoenix? Yes. Five. What did she? What did they, they think was going to happen when they got here? Well, I think they were they were hoping to be able to uh, gain entrance into the United States, and they were going to seek asylum. Uh, they were they were seeking a better life. I'm sure that you know many of us uh, here today have relatives that came to the United States under very similar circumstances, maybe a hundred years ago or more. Do you have anything to do with Darwin Mejia Mejia's case? He's a seven year old. Uh, his mom is in D.C. about to have the court hearing. No. How did you trace him to here? Uh, it, it took a while. We were finally able to obtain information uh, that demonstrated that he was here, but it was not easy. You know, many of these mothers have no idea uh, where their children are uh, anywhere in the country. They haven't been told where they've been transported to. Uh, I tweeted out last night a copy of a form that one of my clients in California completed yesterday morning uh, in an attempt to find out where her little girl is, her seven-year-old little girl. Uh, and I also provided uh, ICE's response, which is they don't, quote, have that information, close quote. Well, let, me, let me ask you this. If they don't have that information, who does? How are, we, how are we supposed to track these kids down and reunite them with our families, with their families, if we can't even figure out where everyone is? This is a, one of the reasons why you don't take children and parents and separate them by hundreds or thousands of miles all across the nation, especially when you don't have the way or a way of tracking them down. It makes re, reunification incredibly difficult. Um, and there appears to be no effort being undertaken whatsoever to reunite these families with their children by the government. Talk about the time that you spent with him in there. How many hours and was he, I mean, how, well, your reaction to him not believing you? Well, I mean, it was, it was sad. It was, it was terrible. I mean, this is an excruciating process, uh, you know, and for all the critics out there uh, that think that this is, a, is an acceptable way to treat mothers and children, have them come down here to one of these detention centers and meet with these children. Have them go to Laredo and meet with some of these mothers and hear the stories of these mothers and when they have their children stripped from their arms and when they break down uncontrollably crying. I'd like to see them sit in the interview rooms that I've sat in um, over the last week and hear those stories. And then let's see what they have to say. Then let's see if they're so critical of what we're attempting to do here. It's an outrage. The what sort of services are they offering inside to help this young man deal with, cope with what he's going through? Well, I mean, I think they have counselors. I think their counselors are doing everything in their power to, to provide for these children. There's 128 children presently um, inside these gates, uh, with uh, the vast majority of them uh, being separated from their parents. The president says that he has changed his policy, from widely reported. And today, Melania Trump went to one of these centers on the border in Texas to show her personal concern. What do you make of these overtures, and do you think there has been a change of heart in the administration? Well, my reading of the policy uh, is that it only applies on a go-forward basis. Uh, there's a number of problems with the policy. It's also going to allow for uh, permanent potential detention of these families. There's no time frame relating to how long they can keep these families together. But the most important uh, problem with the policy from my perspective is that it doesn't provide for any reunification effort whatsoever for the thousands of families and thousands of children that have already been impacted 
uh, over the last month or so. How long has Samir been at this facility? Um, we don't know uh, exactly. He's been separated from his mother, though, since June 2nd. Uh, we believe that he's been here for at least 10 days. Do you also plan on visiting the children of the other four families that you represent? Yes, that's where I'm off to now. All right, Any, anything else? Does he have any brothers and sisters or that are in the boat, too, or are they the same situation as him? Or? No, no. Is you think? with his mom? Or I'm, I'm bigger, sorry? Is there a bigger group of migrants or just... No, it's just him and his mom that were attempting to cross. Across Mexico? Correct. Well, lar largely on foot. I, I don't know exact. I don't know exactly how far and at what time. What I do know is that the trip took three months and it was largely on foot. So there was no coyote involved. You're representing moms, mothers, and children. Representing mothers of children as well as um, displaced uh, children. No, there was no coyote involved. There was no, uh, you know, there was no bad hombre Mexican hiding in the bushes looking to use a child to uh, to gain entry into the U.S. so that. Uh, he could do harm to American citizens. It's a bunch of nonsense. Um, it's, a, it's a creation from whole cloth, and it's designed to prejudice Americans against people that are trying to come here uh, and, and do better by themselves and their children. And to use these children as a political pawn and to make up stories about coyotes using uh, children as pawns in order to gain entry into the United States is an absolute disgusting disgrace. Thank you. Who are the other four children that were All right, everyone, that was attorney Michael Avenatti saying that he is representing a little Honduran boy who had a very hard time even believing that uh, he was in contact with his mother. He said it's believed the boy has been here detained in Phoenix since June 2nd. So the immigration debate hitting right here at home. If you're